Well, that was fun. After three hours of severe weather coverage last evening, the panhandle for multiple tornado warnings, we are far less active today. Still risk for some severe storms, though. Let's talk about it in this Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Hello and good morning. It is the 9th of September, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to pop on in for some Texas weather information and Baldy and Chief weather humor. We do appreciate it. We know there's plenty of places you can go for that, so thanks for taking the time to join us. We'll get right to it. Here's the high res rapid refresh model simulated weather radar for today, tonight into Wednesday. Isolated to widely scattered thunderstorms are possible late this afternoon through the night into Wednesday morning across the Texas Panhandle and West Texas. We could also see some thunderstorms through, well, today and tomorrow along the lower Texas Gulf Coast and the Rio Grande Valley. A vast majority of Texas is not going to see rain over the next two days. You could see those storms in West Texas should weaken by late this evening, but more activity moving south into the panhandle from Kansas, Colorado, Oklahoma, New Mexico into the morning hours Wednesday, and we may see another round of thunderstorms move towards the Dalhart region of the northwestern panhandle Wednesday afternoon and evening. Here's the severe weather outlook for today. We have a level 1 out of 5 risk for isolated severe thunderstorms, 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest in terms of the overall coverage of severe storms, meaning we have a low-end isolated risk for severe thunderstorms this afternoon and evening across West Texas in the Panhandle, including places like Lubbock, Plainview, Childress, Amarillo, Dumas, Perryton, Canadian, back west to Dowhart. The most intense storms today could produce hail up to the size of golf balls and localized damaging wind gusts of 60 to 70 plus miles an hour. Those strong outflow winds from storms could result in areas of blowing dust. Dangerous cloud to ground lightning outside of thunderstorm areas of precipitation may also result in grass fires. When thunder roars, get your keister indoors. Main severe weather threat will be late afternoon through the early evening before storms weaken. Wildfire outlook the next several days from the Texas A&M Forest Service today and tomorrow. We're looking at generally low to moderate fire danger. On Thursday, we see the introduction of high fire danger across the Panhandle, West Texas, Permian Basin into well, the area around Fort Stockton. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we begin to dry out. The tropics, guess what? It's nothing. Zilch, zero, nada. It is literally more empty than my brain is this morning. I, yeah, that's about all I could say about that. So peak of the hurricane season, and we are, well, zilch, zero, nada, the Q word. Take a look at the weather pattern over the next seven days in the European weather model. We're looking at about 18,500 feet above sea level, 500 millibars, halfway up the atmosphere. And we're generally showing you the geopotential height anomalies, which at this point is a good indication of are we going to be warmer and less active or cooler and more active. Well, we're going to have an upper level trough in on the east coast of the United States. That's going to bring cooler weather or a continuation of that to the eastern United States over the next several days. You can see we get a quick moving storm system on the west coast as well. Uh, but here in Texas, you can see those uh, lines kind of shifting up and north over Texas. That's an indication of a ridge or an area of higher pressure. And in that case, uh, it's going to do what summer heat domes tend to do to us here. It's going to get back to summer. We're going to warm up. And we're going to settle on down, meaning precipitation chances are mostly looking near zero across a majority of Texas over the next seven days. Now, that doesn't mean all of Texas, parts of the Panhandle, West Texas, and along parts of the Texas coast could continue to see at least isolated to scattered storm chances. But the rest of us, well, guess what? Uh, it's really looking pretty calm. 
in the Weather Department. And that's not only a Texas thing, as I'll show you here in a minute. Here is the European weather model taking us through late week. This is Friday. You can see we could still have some showers and thunderstorms near the lower Texas Gulf Coast, the Rio Grande Valley, where we have uh, plenty of moisture in place. You can see, though, the remainder of the coastline looking pretty inactive. Some thunderstorm chances hanging into Saturday afternoon and evening across the Panhandle in West Texas. We'll keep an eye on that. If that happens, some of those storms may be throwing out some hail and gusty winds. On Sunday, you can see same story. Maybe a few storms trying to shift south into the Panhandle from Kansas, Oklahoma. Maybe some isolated showers in the Big Bend in far west Texas, along with the lower Texas Gulf Coast. But overall, this map is looking pretty empty for the next five to seven days. Here's forecast rain totals over the next seven days across the continental United States, and guess what? Uh, we could see maybe one to two inches of rain, maybe a little bit higher along the immediate lower Texas Gulf Coast, South Padre Island, the uh, Brownsville area, back to McAllen. Looking wet over the next few days at times, uh, but that's it. Outside of the scattered thunderstorm chances in the Panhandle in West Texas, maybe a few showers in the Guadalupe Mountains in the Big Bend. The next seven days, much of the state is not going to see a drop of rain. And that pattern with low precipitation chances also includes the Mid-South and even parts of the eastern United States. Florida is looking wet, at least the mainland. The Florida Panhandle is not. Uh, and then you can see a pretty air, dry air mass settling up along the Appalachian Mountains into New England. Temperatures over the next five days. Here we go today. Warming back up. We're still going to have highs mostly in the mid to upper 80s, north Texas, northeast Texas. Everyone else, though, we're getting back up generally into the low and mid 90s, upper 90s around Laredo and down El Paso in the borderland. Tomorrow, mid to upper 90s return to the southeastern half of Texas and parts of the big country, northwest Texas, in the panhandle, down to the Permian Basin, uh, back to, well, late summer. Heading into Thursday, same story. Highs mostly in the middle 90s across Texas. Higher terrain at the Davis Mounds, generally in the upper 80s. 94 in El Paso and McAllen. 99 in Laredo, looking at about 93 in Houston. 97 in San Antonio, 96 in Austin, about 93 to 94 in DFW. Heading into Friday, hottest temperatures, eastern two-thirds of the state of Texas. Probably near 100 degrees just south of San Antonio. Low to mid Upper 90s across the eastern two-thirds of Texas, western third of the state, upper 80s to middle 90s. And then going into Saturday, a similar story. Maybe a few degrees less hot in the Panhandle, West Texas with mid to upper 80s there. 92 in El Paso, 96 down in Pecos. We're looking at about 91 to 92 in Odessa to Midland, 94 DFW, 95 in Texarkana. We're looking at about 94 down in the Lufkin area and Houston, 93 in Beaumont, 95 in Victoria, 92 to 95 Corpus Christi, down in McAllen, 98 in Laredo, 93 in Del Rio, 94 in Abilene, 95 in Vernon. So, with that being said, trends hanging into mid-month, the 14th through 18th of September, above average temperatures looking pretty likely across the state of Texas. Uh, we may see some uptick in precipitation chances at least continue. Uh, Panhandle, West Texas, down to the borderland of far west Texas, while the eastern half to the eastern two-thirds of Texas looking drier, heading into the next seven to 10 days. So that's it for your Texas weather roundup. As always, you can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar, daily Texas weather roundup, and more on the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search your Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps for your device. You also find us on the web, texasstormchasers.com, and of course, right here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. We really do appreciate it. Y'all have an amazing day, and God bless.